Hey friend, I'm so glad you want to take some time exploring the first two chapters of the book of Philippians as we read this together here and to pray through how it still has a, a significant impact on our lives today. Uh, the book of Philippians is another one of Paul's epistles, and it's another book that he wrote while he was sitting in prison. So it's it's quite the paradox to think of Paul's daily circumstances, but how much he writes Philippians to express the joy and contentment that comes that it has with a life that is centered on Jesus. It's not a book like Galatians and Colossians. It's different because he wrote those two letters to those churches when they were in crisis. But instead, he was really just writing a, a letter of encouragement and love for the Philippian believers. Um, more than any other church at that time, the believers in Philippi were really significant in offering Paul the material support that he needed for his ministry. And so I, I, this letter is, is just a, a thank you for them and an encouragement for them to really live out their faith and to very to much take seriously their relationship with the Lord. So um, Paul's joy at the mere thought of the Philippian church is is really seen in how he writes to them. Um, and so he just takes that every step that he needs to, to take his own joy and his own thankfulness to just portray his joy and thankfulness in his life in Jesus and the fact that he wants them to completely have their lives centered on Christ too. So that's a theme that obviously we can take to heart deeply, that um, no matter what our circumstances, if we were a missionary sitting in prison or in whatever type of life, that it is very possible that we can know joy and contentment through relationship with Jesus, and Paul expresses that really distinctly in the book of Philippians. So I'm glad that we have the opportunity to read this together. Today, in this video, we'll be going through chapters 1 and 2, and then we'll have another video that we, we go over chapters 3 and 4. Would you just please take a moment to pray with me so that we can ask the Lord for his insights as we start to just look closely at the epistle of Philippians. Lord, thank you. Thank you that Paul was such an incredible model of of contentment and um, knowing that his life is completely given over to you and knowing that any joy and peace that we are able to find in this life really comes as a direct impact of having a life centered around Jesus Christ. So, Lord, all those themes that Paul just expresses in this letter, I pray that you would open our eyes and ears to them deeply, that we would really see the relationship, that we'd really see the impact that that holds in our lives today, and that we would be encouraged to really press more deeply in our relationship with you because of how we just are encouraged by Paul's letters overall, and specifically with this video, with the first two chapters of the book of Philippians. So bless our time together and reading of your word, and thank you that you're always with us, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Philippians 1. <clears throat> Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi with the overseers and deacons, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, 
and in that I rejoice. Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live as Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I'm hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you, that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Philippians chapter 2. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure." Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you should also be glad and rejoice with me. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I too may be cheered by news of you. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely interested for your welfare. For they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with a father he has served me in the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him just as soon as I see how it will go with me, and I trust in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. I thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. For he's been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill, near to death. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men, for he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service with me. That's the conclusion of the first two chapters of Philippians, and that's in the English Standard Version of the Bible. So would you just join me in prayer as we consider some of the themes that we've seen here? Lord, Paul is such an example that he is 
He just lives in the fullness of life and joy, even though he's in chains in the prison for the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's still encouraging others around him. He's still mentoring other men so that they might grow in their their ministry as well. And he sees so fully his purpose in life that no matter where he is, he knows that pressing into you is the greatest joy and the greatest dignity that he could ever know. And Lord, I pray that you would really kind of just infuse that in our hearts and minds too as we consider these words of Paul. Lord, we we are challenged by his words. So if any comfort from love, participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, that we would be of the same mind. Unity is difficult these days. Everyone wants to have their own opinion and everyone wants their own opinion to be right. Um, so Lord, I pray that you would give your church, your bride, great humility in these days to be able to be of one mind based on the truth of Jesus Christ. Help us not to do things from selfish ambition and conceit, but Lord, you would indeed help us to have the humility to count others more significant than ourselves. Lord, this is these are challenging words, especially in, in times when they're so troubled and there's just such an influx of opinions and hierarchies and everything else happening in the world. I pray, Lord, that you would mark us with humility and that the world would recognize your humility in us and be drawn to you because of that. And Lord, that you would help us to be missionaries who bring peace, love, light, and especially truth, the truth of the gospel, that we would be able to just share um, and and live lives of testimonies that it would be very obvious that we believe what we say, and we live out those words seeking after your truth every day. Lord, I pray for my friends who are listening to this video. Please bring them encouragement. Let their times in the Word be rich and be filled with insights that are given from you and that you would speak to each of us individually for you know our hearts, you know our minds, and you know you know specifically what we respond to. And I, I thank you for that type of just such individualized care that you give for each of your children, Lord. You love us deeply. We are so grateful for that. So I just pray a blessing on all those that are listening to this, Lord, that we would each be able to walk forth with a greater desire to seek after you more deeply every day. And we pray all these things in the name of our Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll have another video up with Philippians chapters 3 and 4, and I encourage you to come back and listen to that, and we can join together in more time surrounding the Word of God. would love if you would subscribe to the channel and give a like to this video so that we have an opportunity to reach more people. Uh, so your participation in that really helps a lot. Thanks a lot. Hope to see you soon.